keeping the heartbeat of the city healthy with health tips and benefits from real doctors in the area, this is Health Help. Okay, we'll talk today a little bit about the Zika virus, which has been in the news and a lot of interest through the CDC and a lot of interest uh, and money actually being poured into Zika virus research and also in prevention of the spread of the virus. Zika virus is an alpha virus that is similar to yellow fever, chikungunya, dengue, and the West Nile virus uh, that has uh, been endemic throughout the world and passed through the United States a number of years ago. The interesting thing about Zika virus is it's relatively new. It began in Africa probably 40 to 50 years ago and then in the last two or three years we've seen large number of outbreaks in French Polynesia uh, in the, um, and now moving into South America into Brazil uh, and much of the middle Americas uh, extending up into Mexico and United States province of Puerto Rico. We recognize that um, for most people Zika is an insignificant in illness. 80% will not even know that they've even had the virus. 20% may become ill with just fever, cough, rash, and conjunctivitis. Where things get a little bit interesting with Zika though is in South America, particularly in the country of Brazil, there were a number of babies born with a condition called microcephaly. And microcephaly is just a failure of the top part of the brain to develop. It's associated with seizures, uh, a lot of cognitive impairment, and it's very high cost, uh, high resource utilizing illness for this child, it's unfortunate. And what they found was a number of these babies were found to be infected with the Zika virus. We found that infection with Zika virus during any stage of the pregnancy can cause this condition and as such creates great concern for us here in the United States uh, for those babies that may be born. Also for those who are traveling to other countries uh, who may become infected. Another interesting tidbit about the Zika virus is it can be sexually transmitted from male to female. This isn't really a problem unless you become pregnant and then the infant becomes infected with Zika virus in utero. So now we have uh, travel recommendations in place from the World Health Organization. This is classified as an epidemiologic emergency by the World Health Organization and the CDC. Our efforts are one, to prevent the spread of Zika virus here in the Americas, uh, two, to gather uh, ongoing information about how this virus relates to changes to uh, children in utero. So we now recommend women who are pregnant uh, certainly should not be traveling to any of the endemic uh, countries, particularly in South America. We also are recommending that uh, if you've traveled to any of these countries, that you maintain the mosquito protection when you come back here to the United States for at least two weeks. If you or your partner have traveled to an area endemic with this disease, certainly we're encouraging uh, women and men to use uh, protection with condoms to prevent transmission of the illness. Remembering 80% of, of people will not be symptomatic at all. The way this virus is transmitted, of course, is through mosquitoes. The mosquitoes, two types of mosquitoes are Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Uh, Egypti is not very common in our Tennessee region, but albopictus is very uniform throughout our region. And these are the mosquitoes that like to bite during the day, uh, not the typical Culex mosquitoes that bites primarily morning and evening. So if you go to one of these areas of countries and you may be sick and not know it, we don't want you to infect our local mosquitoes that could then later transmit it to other people and or transmit it to a pregnant woman. If, if you are a pregnant woman and you have had exposure and or illness either to the country 
uh, or with a known illness, uh, we are doing testing through the Department of Health to try to decide if you have been infected with the Zika virus. And then we'll want to continue to monitor that pregnancy for complications. So uh, uh, it's creating a lot of concern. Uh, there are a number of other diseases transmitted by mosquitoes that includes West Nile virus, encephalitis, dengue, chikungunya, all these viruses are transmitted by mosquitoes. So it's important not that we that we not only protect ourselves from mosquitoes for the Zika virus infection, but also to prevent transmission of these other types of mosquito-borne infections. Things you can do around your home that would be beneficial, uh, realizing that mosquitoes in general do not tra travel more than about 100 yards from where they were hatched. So you want to reduce the habitat around your home. That can include emptying bird baths. Anything with standing water favors these types of mosquitoes that, that like to bite humans. And so uh, you need to do a survey around your home every week or particularly after every rain. So look at gutters that don't empty, uh, water tiles, uh, uh, tires, receptacles that don't empty properly that leave standing water for mosquitoes to breed in. If you do have ponds and such as those things, there are natural bacterial uh, agents that you can put in the water that will not harm wildlife, is not a pesticide, that will reduce the number of mosquito larvae within the water. Also, you need to protect yourself when you go out into the environment. That includes wearing uh, mosquito protective clothing, such as those impregnated with permethrin. Also using DEET, particularly on children, uh, and, uh, uh, and then preventing exposure just by wearing protective clothing garments and avoiding uh, biting uh, hours when, they may, when you're in that environment. Uh, we stress that right now prevention is key. There is no treatment, there is no cure, there is no vaccine that we can use for this disease. And as such, uh, prevention becomes the number one message we need to get out to our public.